that suspected Chinese surveillance balloon spotted in the skies over the continental U.S. has sparked concerns about national security and diplomacy regarding Beijing. Is it more about symbolism than substance? Secretary of State Anthony Blinken was due to travel to China this weekend. He postponed his trip, calling the balloon's infiltration of U.S. airspace a, quote, irresponsible act that created conditions that undermined the purpose of the trip. The public first learned of the balloon's existence Thursday while it was over Montana, which is home to U.S. intercontinental ballistic missile silos and strategic bomber bases. China is saying that it's all innocent. On Friday, a spokesperson for the Chinese Foreign Ministry said this, is a civilian airship used for research, mainly meteorological purposes, affected by the westerlies and with limited self-steering capability. The airship deviated far from its planned course. The Chinese side regrets the unintended entry of the airship into airspace due to force majeure. But the U.S. State Department called it a, quote, clear violation of our sovereignty as well as international law. The Pentagon said on Friday the balloon currently does not pose a military or political threat. And a senior U.S. defense official told CNN that military officials had advised President Biden not to shoot the balloon down due to fear over the debris posing a safety threat. I tweeted out a quick take last night. I said the violation of our sovereign airspace should not be a partisan issue. Many are questioning why we aren't taking it out, and they especially are coming from the right. Florida Senator Marco Rubio, a member of Congress's so-called Gang of Eight, who are briefed on national intelligence matters, he tweeted this, it was a mistake to not shoot down that Chinese spy balloon when it was over a sparsely populated area. This is not some hot air balloon. It has a large payload of sensors roughly the size of two city buses and the ability to maneuver independently. Utah Senator Mitt Romney wrote, a big Chinese balloon in the sky and millions of Chinese TikTok balloons on our phones. Let's shut them all down. Over on Truth Social, former President Trump, much more succinct, shoot down the balloon, he said. Joining me now to discuss is retired Air Force Lieutenant General David Deptula, who was the Air Force's first chief of intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. He's a fighter pilot with more than 3,000 flying hours. He was the principal attack planner for the Operation Desert Storm Air Campaign, commander of no-fly operations over Iraq in the late 90s, and served on two congressional commissions focused on America's future defense strategy. He's currently the dean of the Mitchell Institute for Aerospace Studies. General, thanks so much for being here. What exactly are the options when an object like this is at 60,000 feet? Um, well, Michael, first, thanks for uh, having me on and uh, uh, really appreciate it. It's a great question. Um, there are several options. Uh, some of them depend upon the location of uh, the balloon. What makes this a complicated situation is that it's up at 60,000 feet, um, and there aren't a lot of uh, uh, aircraft that are capable that can go up there with the kind of means to shoot it down. Today, you're looking at the F-22 or the F-15, uh, and then the weapons that, that can be used to actually um, shoot the balloon down. Of course, there are surface-to-air missile systems, but those are fixed, and we really don't have uh, any of those operationally deployed in the continental United States. So the options are limited it to... Uh, fighter aircraft. Do you know that it's necessarily going to fall over a particular area? Meaning, okay, if, if you use the weapon systems that you just identified and you're successful in hitting it, like, how long is it going to take for it to come down? And do you necessarily know where it will land? Well, that's a great question. And the short answer is no, you don't know with any degree of accuracy, uh, because it depends upon uh, just how large the uh, hole or uh, the damage done to the balloon, which will determine how fast it will come down. Uh, and then what you hit, I mean, you hit the balloon and you can penetrate it and it can come down at a certain rate. Um, if it's all in one piece, uh, probably no big deal. It's going to land in one place. Uh, but if you hit the payload package and destroy that, um, now you have deb debris that's going to be scattered. But the fact of the matter is, the, the doggone thing should have been shot down before it penetrated the territory of our sovereign airspace. Your introductory conclusion was a pretty good one, because what's really of more concern than the sensor package that this Chinese balloon is carrying is why did we let a potential adversary air vehicle penetrate the sovereign territory 
of Canada, the United States. It should have been neutralized as it entered our air defense identification zone. So, of course, we in the public only learned of this on Thursday. I think what you're saying, General, is that the military probably had knowledge for much longer, including preceding when it entered our airspace. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. We have this organization that's known as the North American Aerospace Defense Command. It's a combined organization of the United States and Canada that provides aerospace warning, air sovereignty, and then protection uh, or at least it's supposed to protect Canada and the continental United States. Um, but I, I would suggest to you too, and uh, this is a discussion for a whole nother program, but I think like most of the capabilities of the United States Air Force, they've been underfunded and allowed to atrophy over the past 30 years. And this is a consequence. General, how's it going to end? I pointed out a political reality that the president's going to speak to the nation and to the Congress on Tuesday night. And the reports that we're getting suggest that this thing will hit the Atlantic probably by the end of the, the weekend, depending upon the wind. So you think he's going to take it out? You think the president's going to give the order and the U.S. military will take it out before Tuesday? Um, you know, that's uh, that's a, I, I don't want to be facetious, but that's a question for the president. I really don't know. I would tell you that my opinion is um, he'll probably let it go. Um, but the fact of the matter is this is not an inconsequential act, um, and it should have been shot down prior to violating a sovereign U.S. airspace. So my poll question today asks whether this is a matter of national security or national pride. What's your answer to that question? Um, uh, national security. Uh, I mean, look, um, this particular balloon may have been just a weather balloon that um, uh, flown off course. I don't believe that. I, I don't think it was an accident. I believe it was a Chinese testing the U.S. reaction. Um, but, you know, another balloon could carry, for example, um, uh, an EMP device, electromagnetic pulse. Um, that could shut down segments of our U.S. electric power grid. So it's not an inconsequential fact um, that this balloon has been uh, sent to fly over the continental United States. 